Blog Talk Radio. This is West Virginia Championship Wrestling Weekly Recap. Tonight we'll discuss today's television broadcast and the upcoming TV tapings. Okay, everybody, I guess the nerdies have finally went off the air. A lot of talking about eating werewolf ass, but we won't get into that. Um, we got a lot going on. Uh, last week, the satellite up, a satellite up leak here at the ranch. It got knocked out, so that's the reason why the show ended up being knocked off the air real unexpectedly. But um, we got everything up and going good tonight, and um, I believe we got Rando on the line. You there, Rando? I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Okay, so we got we got like two weeks worth of stuff to really try to weed through. Plus, I mean, biggest weekend of <laughs> of the year, short of maybe miracle. Uh, it's the yearly trip to war for the live event of the year, and then we got the TV taping come Saturday, and just a lot of big stuff. Plus, you know, the nerdy power hour later today. Technically, we'll call it tomorrow night because most people are going to go to sleep between. And it's a good thing because if not, they might go to sleep during. But the power hour is tomorrow night, 10, thir- 10 o'clock. Eric Sinclair is going to be on there talking about Waffle House and all sorts of lies about me. But we won't get into all that. But um, I guess uh, start out with, uh, Rando, did you see last week's television? No, I did not. Um, well, I've been... Uh, work's been really crazy for me, uh, as, as you know, and and others may know. I, oh, I hold down three separate jobs, and it's not because I have to; it's just because I need to, uh, or else I'll just go out of my fucking mind. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I understand completely. So what we'll start with? I know you know what was on last week, so we can just go over the matches. I mean, of course, there was the match we was actually publicized pretty well that to, to make everybody happy that you, to let them know that you know the world ch- our West Virginia Champions Tour did take have a stop in West Virginia. I know Jimmy Kelly's probably overly excited about that, but you know that and the, the match between George South and Scotty Range was on last week. Wonderful match. I I can't speak high enough of this match. It's, it makes what me proud to be. You, you got that. you got George South in the ring. You got so WVCW West Virginia champion Scotty Reigns in the ring. I mean, you, 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 let's face facts. Let's 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 cut the bullshit. As far as being a bad guy goes, there there is no better bad guy than than George South in WVCW. I mean, he just he just has this way of just eating at you, and and, and he loves to do it. And that's exactly what he did. I, I was there for the camp show, and and just just standing in the back and watching everything, just it's like wow. I mean, uh, this guy he, he can turn on you at the drop of a hat, and uh, and he actually had you know me riled up. And I was you know uh, you always got to be subjective, you know, that you know, people are on being working behind the scenes and all that. But but to be honest, I, I really did uh, enjoy the outcome of that match. Uh, and uh, back at uh, Scotty Reigns uh, retained the title, and uh, yeah, the Reigns yeah. reign. And, and, and but truly, on last week's episode, there was enough. The other match was right there, neck and neck, because it saw the return of one of my favorite grapplers to compete in West Virginia. Not just West Virginia Championship Wrestling. Heck, I'll even go as far as say the East Coast. The Silver City Strangler was in action last week, Rando. Can you believe that? Silver City Strangler and Jake Jacobs, young up and comer, good looking kid, versus Rip Manson and Penny Conley doing his best to be the part to play the part of Dr. Roger Ham with a lovely LeMay raincoat. I mean it's, it's beautiful. So, so the Strangler was on TV what, again. what you're saying but no no, what you're basically saying is that it was a handicap match. It was Benny Conley and the hustler Rip Manson against Jake Jacobs. Now I wouldn't c I wouldn't call Benny having to tag with Rip a handicap. Not at all. I mean, you know, Ripper's Ripper. And I'll tell you, Ripper was whooping a man last week. I mean, that's the most intense I've seen Ripper in I don't know how long. It was really good to see him ripping him. And, you know, Benny picked up the pace with him. And uh, and unfortunately, you know, the Strangler came out on the losing end of it all, him and young Jake Jacobs. But it was really good. 
And oh yeah, I, I, Cody Green just brought up a good point. He was yelling at the chick from WVVA. Uh, I can't remember her name, telling her to quit calling his house at three o'clock in the morning. Well, you know, I'm sure she does. I'm positive. Well, she yeah, does. yeah, I'm sure that Mama Ann don't like it too much, but oh, I don't. I don't I don't know. I think Mama Ham may be a little hard to hear, but uh, or at least she don't she don't care. I mean, they may have one of them open relationships. You just never can tell. People are strange like that. Now, and and truly, that was that was basically it. Spotlight last week. Um, not a lot of people have seen it, and really and truly, it's a good episode. It, it contains a match from uh, where J.C. Dykes Jr. Um, went up against Mikey. God loving Michael Stephen Michaels. He brought they brought Stephen brought the revolution to Milton, West Virginia, and went out on the losing end again, wearing his pretty pink panties. But he's trying hard, folks. He's got the heart of a champion, and you know what? I, I think one of these days he's going to he's going to knock Dykes right off that pedestal he thinks he's on. That's if I don't get if I don't just eat the pedestal and then crap it back out. So on well, Friday night, it, more it, with it's, it's like this. You know, I I am a uh, I'm, I'm a Sneep, I'm a Stephen Michaels fan. I really am, and uh, I've seen the way that that he's treated by JC. Um, and uh, uh, to be honest, it's uh, I can't wait for the day. You know, watch out for the little guy. You can only you know sit there and slap somebody so many times before they stand up and slap you back. I've seen, like I said, I've seen the way that he treats him in the ring. I've seen the way that he treats him backstage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, Oh, from so, day one, that's the way he's treated him. I yeah. mean, it's. I mean, and, and 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 truly, you can you can smack that dog around all you want. Sooner or later, it's going to bite you, and you're probably not going to like it when you get bit. I mean, and that's that's just how that is. Now, we're going to go and uh, go ahead now. I think that's enough, really, to, to, about spotlight from last week. Go back, check it out. Links are posted all all over the WBCW Facebook page, the Facebook dot com backslash WBCW TV, all right there together, all lowercase. It'll take you right there. Scroll down, you'll find links to last week's and this week's TV episode and spotlight. This week's TV episode started out with your favorite tag team, Rando. Oh yeah, my favorite tag team, of course. And you know. Eric Eric did the talking. I did the silent bobbing. And we went out there and we faced a newcomer in the Blue Tornado. Good looking kid. Um, he blew in out of North Carolina, I believe. And uh and the jester. And uh it was a, it was a match of sorts. I, I got the flying hammer lock in, that was the key thing. And then um it stood. It was a good match. We 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 won out of course and then um then come the match of the week. I mean, well, nothing well, against the main event. A little bit there, let, me let me back up just a little bit there, Hoach. Uh, I got to say, thumbs up to the little uh, uh, demolition shout-out you did there at the end. I oh, enjoyed the, that. The, the oh, the finisher? Yeah, that was a good little finish. Yeah. Um, uh, we may have to try to repeat that. Uh, I've, I used that backbreaker on and off most of my career because it's something me and Scotty both stole from, well, I stole it from Scotty. He stole it from uh, Playboy Buddy Rose. Not Freebird Buddy Rose, people. Not that cat from up in Vienna that wants to tell you he was on WrestleMania. No. The real Playboy Buddy Rose out of Portland. God rest his soul, greatest worker you'll never see. Most of us never got to see. But it's a, it's a Billy Robinson inside-out backbreaker. I love it. And we did it, and Eric dropped the elbow, and my Lord, I thought we broke the kid. I just honestly did. And so I, th- I think that may be coming. If, the, if that dastardly Lavelle ever shows up, he may have to take it, take it once or twice, maybe even three times, just to make it, just to make sure we get it right. But he's been there the whole time. Foster's been there the whole damn time. Foster's been there the whole damn time. I know Foster's been there. Well, no, that's just the problem. Foster hasn't been there the whole time. I mean, really, I come one, I come one month, I miss three or four, you know, whatever. 
I don't know. I, I don't think he's, I think the lack of commitment may prove to be that he may not be him. But the next matchup. Now, I, now, now in between the matches, uh, there's the, the the heartthrobs come out and they, and made it known that they're bringing the nuclear weapons to war and they're going to take out the old smelly feet. So that's that, and I, and I thoroughly hope they do. Uh, I, I would love to see a Scud missile go up in the middle of the war. But Baron Bowler versus Benny Conley. Words, I, I can't really form the words to describe how well and how proud I was of Benny to go out there and compete with Baron, who is one of the top talents out of North Carolina. Now, don't don't get me wrong. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, you're just saying that because y'all bring him in. No. If, if Baron Bullard was working for the competition, I would tell you that he is one of the best talents out there. And Benny went with him, Hammer and Tom. It was a great matchup. There was a little screw up at the end that cost Benny, but all in all, I mean, a top notch match. Just top notch okay. match. Uh, once again, I want to step back to a little comment you just made. And what I'm going to say right now is probably not going to make a lot of people happy. Um, some people might take it the wrong way, uh, both inside uh, WBCW and outside WBCW. But when you mention competition, outside competition, it's not competition. It's independent professional wrestling. It doesn't matter if you work for this company or that company or that company or our company. It's still independent professional wrestling. We are not competing against one another. We should not be competing with one another. We should be banding oh, we together. And that's the way uh, that, I, went that, that I don't see anybody else's competition. I see anybody else, any other promotion out there as a good thing because that gives other guys a chance to go out there and work, period. Mm-hmm. Well, that's my Brando, honest you belief, and if I piss people that. off because of it, so be it. But well, I, say comp- I say competition just as a easy way to say everybody, anybody else because most people, I mean, truly, there is no competition. I have brothers that work for every other company in this state, the next state over, the state after that. I've got brothers working everywhere, and I'm you know it's not just all oh, well, yeah I know him no I've got brothers I got guys that I worry about and I'm on I check and make sure they're safe when they come home off the road you know and you can't the biggest misconception everybody has is yes we are WBCW that's our alphabet soup there are other ones with other alphabet soups at the end of the day when your poster says pro wrestling the common person walking in and out of the grocery store that sees that poster doesn't see the letters. They see pro wrestling. So whatever happens, you know, that's why it's so hard when you get a black eye to, on the business to get it cleared up because it people don't realize that this company is different than this company, which is different than this company. They lump us all together. And we tried the WBCW to brand ourselves and try to make ourselves known as us so that we don't have to suffer the effects of black eyes that may come that we may have no we have no control over. I mean, because we have no control over what anybody else does. We can't stop some 14-year-old kids from buying a ring from high spots and renting a building and running a show and it causes everybody heartache and, and pain. I've seen that happen in many places. It happens a lot in Tennessee. You'll get these kids that don't know nothing, but some one of them will have a little bit of money. Mommy and Daddy will buy them this and rent them a building, and the next thing you know, the town's in a 50-mile radius around it. The, the, everybody just gives up uh, gives up on, on going to see live wrestling because of that one show. And, and you got to hope. you got to do it. you know. got to have faith, people. And remember, support everybody. Everybody's out there. We're all busting our humps, doing the best we can. But let's get on back to the TV, Rando. Get off our soapbox right. because. And the main event for the episode was the Bandit versus Roger Ham. Good match. 
that old stinker Danny Ray, I think one of the stinkiest of the old smelly feet. He came out and caused a little distraction. Bandit got Bandit got the international object, laid Roger out, got the pinfall, and truly, I I feel sorry if Scott, whenever Scotty Reigns does make it back to back to the TV tape, and I think Bandit's going to be waiting for him in the parking lot. He has got just a, a distrust and a distaste for Scotty Reigns. And I don't think it's got anything to do with that title. I don't know what it's got to do with, but I'll tell you right now, if I was Scotty Reigns, I'd be watching my back, watching out for the Bandit. That's uh, all I'm going to say on that. And not saying that he ever would, not saying that Scotty Reigns would ever hide, but that's, that's one thing that you would not be able to do anyway, would be to try to mm-hmm. hide from the no, you can't hide from the bandit. Bandit. The no, he, he gets his name. He gets his name for a reason, folks. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to speak from personal experience. There's only one way to deal with the bunkhouse boys, and that's bandit, Willie, both in singles or in a tag team match. You just got to meet them head on. You, you can't skirt the issue because they're like bulldozers, both of them. You just kind of point them in a direction, you kick it in gear, and you pray nothing gets hurt too bad as they roll over them because that's what they are. They, they they get their eyes on a target, and they're just going forward. And you got to do the same thing, or they're just going to run over top of you. But all in all, two really strong weeks of television, I, 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 I've got to say. I'm rather happy with both where they turned out. Uh, now, this week's Spotlight is going to feature a match from the uh, – Body Slams for Sepsis event that happened last month uh, ran by a, a different promotion. Once again, going back to this whole thing, there is no competition. It's a different promotion, UPWA. They had an, a charity event. Uh, myself and Connor Long donated our time to this charity event, and uh, we wrestled against uh, J.C. Dykes and the Dark Patriot making his uh, debut in West, Southern West Virginia. I know who the Dark Patriot used to be, and I'm pretty sure that it wasn't Doug Gilbert under the hood because there was no references to Jerry Lawler, 13-year-old, or anything like that. But let me tell you, the Dark Patriot, whoever this Dark Patriot is, he's a real wily cat. He knew his way around the ring. He seemed a little familiar. I might know who he is. I don't know for sure. That's something for later. We'll do some investigating if he starts snooping back around. But um, that's on Spotlight this week. Uh, There's a replay of the match between Bandit and uh, Roger Hamm on Spotlight. Um, There was a replay of um, the the Lavelle piece, I think the second one that was released. Now, I do know for a fact, I noticed this earlier, that uh, the Lavelle Network uh, Facebook page, that's – rather odd that they have a Facebook page, but, I mean, they've never really been seen in Toto on the television or anything yet, but there has been a new Lavelle video released this week. Uh, Some learned content to the previous ones. A different style visually, but we can, that can be discussed amongst, amongst people as they watch it and comment on it, but that and then there was another one that was actually uh, I saw it went up on the uh, television page, and it was uh, it was Lavelle, and it, it's just like a little slideshow, and and I'm not sure if someone in the production team at WCW put it together. It's really I don't think so because it's I believe Lavelle must have sent it to the department or something because it's got the same music and it's it's the exact same formatting. I'm not sure, but there were a lot of faces in that video that just make you wonder. I mean, heck, my my face was in there. I know I'm not Lavelle. I'm, I just uh, I I couldn't I couldn't be Lavelle. That's just up one side and down the other. I know in my heart I couldn't be a man like Lavelle. I'm a man like a Hojo, and that's all I am. Mightiest Hojo of them all. But that's out there. People want to take a gander at those. Uh, and really and truly, it's it's going to be a big weekend, Rando. I'm excited. I got to, I, I'm 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 looking forward to getting the war early. We're going to get get down and meet with the people a little bit, talk around. I've got to get there early because you know what was announced just earlier on the Nerdies, don't you? And that's that. Um, me and JC are going to go second. So I mean, I've got to be there early to get on it. Not like you're not going to be there early. 
one of the first guys that was killed. What was that, Rando? I'm I'm losing signal or something. I don't know what's up. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I will make an announcement, man. I think you, you've heard about this, too, that uh, there, something new is going to be showing up in war, and I believe the TV tapings next night, that um, WBCW is going to start having programs. Now, I'm not sure if we're going to do lucky numbers. I, 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 if you've been to wrestling events, you understand that there, what the programs are for. A lot of times it's just to run down of matches, a little bit of news, in case you missed something. And um, the lucky number system, if that comes to pass, it was always fun. I used to love seeing those when I'd go to Tennessee. A lot of them would use the lucky number system where the programs would be numbered and there would be a drawing out of it for prizes and such. So that that might even be going on. But I do know I've, I've received word that there's going to be programs available at both, both war and at um, – the TV taping, so that's, a, that's another new twist that we haven't had before. So, but let's just get down to the brass tacks of it. We got tomorrow night, Power Hour, Nerdy Thirties Power Hour, ten o'clock. Look for it here. Look for the links on on the WBCW page. Look for it on the Nerdy page. It's going to be Eric Sinclair for an hour. I'm hoping they don't run into overtime because you get Eric to talk and you never know when he's going to stop. So just, you know, give him his time. He's going to talk to you. He's going to tell you. He's going to lay it out there what he's thinking about everything. And uh, we got that going on. We got got war. Fall brawl. 2-13. Down on the main street. Right in the middle of town, it's going to be, you know, just, it's going to be all out. It's going to be great. Five to 800 people milling around in various states of intoxication. Quality wrestling. It's going to be a good time afterwards. I know they're going to probably have a dance after we get tore down. I believe that's the normal standard procedure. But you know what, folks? Come down. It's a free show. It's going to cost you a little bit of gas money to get there. And, you know, war is not – it's it's not like hopping on the interstate going 20 miles and just pulling right off and you're going to be there. No, there's a little bit of a drive to it, but it's pretty country. It's a wonderful time of year to take a drive down through. And it's really – really, it's it's going to be well worth it. You'll enjoy it coming on down. And uh, we got that. And then Saturday. Come on. Come Actually, on, there's two folks. things. Every, everybody – Now, this one has – the first one hasn't been mentioned much. Uh, and my friends over at the Academy, I'm, I'm Professor Emeritus at WCW Wrestling me? School, the Academy. And um, what that basically entails is I'm an old bastard. I mean, I'm an old bastard, and I'll go out there and I'll tell them what they're doing wrong. I feel like I'm only half the time. But they're going to have an open tryout. Now, I believe the timing on this has been moved back a little bit. They've got a little extra gym time. If you are interested in attending the open tryout, there's going to be a $20 fee just to get in there and try out. Now, that's just to help cover rent and help cover insurance costs and all that sort of stuff, wear and tear on the ring. You'll come in, pay your money. There's some legal paperwork. If you're under 18, we'd really prefer you wait till you're 18, but if you've got a parent or guardian, arrangements can be made. But... Come on out if you want to give it a shot. I mean, if it's your dream. I wish I would have had a chance to have started earlier. I wish there would have been an academy-type thing to have went to because I, I started late. Now I say that, and a lot of people laugh when I say I started late. I started when I was 22. I mean, I've got 18 years in right now, and I started when I was 22. But I really feel like if I would have started when I was 18, those four extra years would have made a lot of difference. And, um, you know, it's all going good, but if if you've got a dream, come out and try to do it because you can't know the wonder of the feeling of knowing, hey, this was my dream. I've lived it. I've done it. I mean, are there things in wrestling I'd still like to do? Yes. But just knowing I had that first match, when I had that first match, I knew I'd accomplished something. 
First time I worked in a different state, I knew I'd accomplished something. First time I got a phone call from a promoter saying, I need you, I felt like I'd accomplished something. If you want to fill those accomplishments, come out and give it a shot. You know, this could be your time to shine. You really could do well in this. And then right after, 7 o'clock, I believe, the doors are going to go wide open, and all the fallout from the night before is going to get uh, be put right out there. Great ma- lineup of matches for the night. I'm not allowed to tell you. I've seen I've seen a couple sheets from what the BOD is working on. It looks like it's going to be a great night of matches, like all thirty doors open. And most importantly, Saturday night's going to be a, a big night because we're going to announce the class of 2013 for the WBCW Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame. Now we do this yearly, and it's it's we always try to. Make that make the best of what we've got, you know. And, and I'm really proud. I've seen two of the names already, and I'm really proud that these two are going in. I have close personal connections to both of them, and it's it's going to be a wonderful event. And I mean, and, and it's just something that's going to lead in. The actual inductions will take place in, in October at the TV tapings. Uh, I re- highly recommend everybody come out for that. We're hoping to have one, if not two, of the inductees. There's one that we're pretty sure is not going to be able to make it just for medical reasons. We would love to have all three. We're praying we might and we might be able to pull it off. But the key thing is Saturday night. I think the name of the show is Showdown, and it's probably going to be a showdown. We've got we've got the Throbs and OSE are, are clashing in war on Saturday, Friday night, and I'll guarantee they'll still be clashing on Saturday night. Me and me and Eric and the outlaw revolution of Michael Stevens and Daniel Halen. We're going to be charging hard at this Lavelle network. I'm not sure. I just, and, you know, I'm sure there'll be some twists and turns there. But the key thing is you've got to be there to see it all. Because even with the television cameras rolling and catching everything that they can, even with Spotlight showing you the extra stuff that we can't get fit into the TV show, if you're not there live, you're missing out because there's stuff that happens that that's just it, it can't go on either one. Uh, there and truly, you can't feel the atmosphere watching it on TV. You need to be up in that crowd, up in them bleachers. Just feel the energy, feel the energy coming from the ring and the energy coming back out of the crowd to the ring. It's a wonderful thing. And um, Brando, you still with me? I've been talking for like 15 minutes now and haven't took a breath and. I don't know. You I'm, uh, uh, just can you hear me? I think Brando's I been taken out by Lavelle. Hello. Oh my lord, Brando's gone, uh, and his phone's still up. I think I think Lavelle has literally thrown him into the trunk. Can you hear me now? Oh my goodness. Well, we got about a minute left. I'm assuming I've lost Rando, and uh, I'm hoping Lavelle hasn't taken Rando and put him in a pit and having him put lotion on the skin. But once again, let's, let's just nail this down. I want to thank y'all for listening. Anybody that's out there listening to this, either live off the blog talk site, I'm sure tomorrow it will get put up onto the YouTube. If you're listening to it, Monster Pop. Thank Monster you. Pops. And Monster you know what? Monster Pops. There ain't nothing better. But tomorrow night, Nerdy 30's Power Hour, Eric St. Clair, full hour, going to be talking about Lavelle. Lavelle might be sponsoring, be sponsoring the Power Hour. How's that going to happen? What's going to happen there? And we got war on Friday, tryouts on Saturday, taping on Saturday, and um Cody just reminded me, and I want to send this out there. Uh, part of our family, Big Willie, lost his father over the past week, and I would like to express my condolences personally. I know what it's like to lose a father. I lost my grandfather raised me, and I've lo- I lost him. And um, just, I-, I feel for you, Willie. The whole family does. The whole WCW family, and we just we hope that you can make it through these trying times and. Come back stronger, but um, really and truly, I think I'm in overtime already because I said I'm not, I'm stream uh, my stream times left. So I hope I hope everybody out there has a good night and God bless y'all. 
come out and see us this weekend. And we'll be back here next week. We're going to talk about everything that happened that we can talk about. And maybe maybe we'll even find out who this William Lavelle cat is. Hope you all have a great night. See you later.